follow up after your last round of interviews that just took place this week um, might have some good news for you. So a list of 171 questions. Roughly, would you say 300,000 to 400,000? Oh, yeah. <laughs> have your project, but then you also mentioned the tech stack you used yeah. for that project because before we deep dive into all of the story, how you got the job interviews and Bloomberg offers and let's do a quick intro. Where are you from? What do you do? And, and fun stuff. Hi, my name is Anirudh Ingle, but Americans can't say that. So I go by Ani. I'm doing my master's in computer science at Texas A&M University. Um, I actually did my entire education for free because I was a TA from day one and I made a sweet stipend of 2.5 grand a month. <laughs> doing what? <it. laughs> yeah. we, I, I know we are going to do a separate video just on that part, how you got that on day one and how you got your entire education for free. But you may also want to mention all the job offers and the full-time uh, offer yeah. you and you're going to work at, where you're going to work right. at. So I interned with Goldman Sachs as an engineering analyst and I got a return offer from them to join them when I graduate in their Dallas office. And um, I soon after finishing my internship in October, I got my full-time offer from Bloomberg in the head of, in the headquarters in Manhattan. And um, I have really something really cool to share with you. Mm. I actually, I didn't pick, pick up the call when they called me and I have a voice note. Oh, that's awesome. Hi, I knew that this is Devin Cox calling from Bloomberg. It is Wednesday at about noon my time. Uh, wanted to follow up after your last round of interviews that just took place this week. Um, might have some good news for you. So if you want to give me a call back, my number is... Uh, that, so, <laughs> it's something that I often listen to. That is awesome. I, I love that you have that voicemail. So when I started my job search, the first thing I did was that I started applying. And the big mistake I made was I told myself that I'll wait till I'm ready to apply mm. to certain companies. But because of that, I actually lost the, the chance to apply to Bloomberg for the internship. Mm. Because mm. I thought I'll apply when I'm ready. Let's do the timeline as well. Like when was this and... Why do you say that you missed out the opportunity on applying for internship? Right. That's a good point. So I landed on 6th August. Mm. As soon as I landed, I um, got my lead code premium subscription <laughs> as, as you must. So I started sending out applications in September, mm. which I will say is really late. I mean, um, wow. if there's somebody, if there's somebody in there who's thinking that it's early, it's really late. Because mm. your experience with the U.S. starts in August. But those job postings are available since May. Mm. That's when the summer sort of starts to end, right? So you, if you land and you start applying, I will go as far as saying that you're late. You mm. should really start applying as soon as you have your visa ready. You mm. know, your, or even the visa, you should apply as soon as it's open. And for that, you have to stay on it in India. I didn't know that. But because yeah. of this platform, I, 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 anybody that watches this, if you're in India, you're going to come for this fall. February is super early. You can maybe start prepping, but start looking. On thanks, around Thanksgiving, I got the next steps with my Goldman Sachs application. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about the specific steps, but I just got a next step. And then I did that. I cleared that and they scheduled an interview for December. Mm. This was my first SDE interview, postponed it to January 14th, but I had about 50 days and this is what I, I will talk about this when we are talking about the prep, but I call this thought of the 50 day program. I had about 50 days and I decided that everything in my life would mm. just go away. I came, I'm actually currently in my sister's house. She lives two hours away from my college. Mm. I came here, not one day I hung out with my friends. My sister saw me. I think twice a day for 30 minutes when I came mm. out to lunch and dinner. Mm. But the entire time, all I did was grind, 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 grind. Nice. How did you start getting interview calls? I will say this. I did a very good job tracking my applications. Mm. Because I knew that I'm not going to spend time on it. First thing I meant, I made was an interview tracker, right? This, this, whatever you want to put up here, right? There's no real template, really. Yeah. You decide what you want to follow. And I think the only thing that's important is deadlines. Yeah. If you're going to track deadlines, right? That's all that's important. Yeah. But I actually gave up on using this entire tracker mm. because I came up with a new system. And then mm. I'll, I'll, before I come up with that, so you can see here that I applied for PM roles, I applied for data science roles. Mm. And then um, there is like a lead code, 
the problem name the link and a one line summary of the solution mm. and the second thing is this was sort of what i would use the plan was that this was the thing that i would use mm. before an interview just to quickly go through yeah. mm. so what i started doing was in my mailbox i made an a group that you can make like a group or whatever label yeah yeah work x versus no work x <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I, i made a label and i only put stuff that gave me next step mm. so if i got next steps or an online assessment or i have an interview scheduled then it went into that label so that way my search space which was actually really big with that whole i applied to at least 600 companies mm. because it was another step in the application process i have to apply and then i have to record it right mm. that's two steps i took the recording away because i realized it's only important to record if i have next steps with them biggest problem is getting an interview call right right uh, i'm assuming you got all your interview calls through uh, online application linkedin yes through linkedin okay so applying through linkedin i only use linkedin nothing else okay uh, right so you applied but still you just applied online yes so yes. what did you do that you were getting interview calls maybe it is your resume maybe it's your linkedin quickly going over my resume if mm. that's okay because yeah, that's yeah, yeah. the first thing i worked on right because okay yeah resume to apply yeah i and i love uh, how you used courses for keywords <laughs> because yes. uh, that's i'm guessing that was the strategy you used deep yeah. learning whatever the job descriptions were yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think that that was going to be my big secret man but you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, i'm a hiring manager i pick up <laughs> things very quickly <laughs> i like how you had have your project but then you also mentioned the tech stack you used yeah. for that project because yeah. that's really how engineering world works uh, like people when you're interviewing like what tech stack you've been using that's what they will ask so it's nice that you have and and i like that you also have github link so yeah. people can actually see your work <laughs> which yeah. is very very important and it tells me that you're not just you know faking it yeah. you actually have stuff Are there so is there anything else you did for getting an interview calls or was that this is all you've done and you started getting interview calls actually i did uh, there is a very specific strategy and i will tell you what their strategy is his name is ashay he got into city bank uh, mm. I, uh, two weeks ago and mm. his he was already graduated in december so he came up with a very good strategy i think he said he broke up his applications into two sections mm. 15 and 25 40 jobs a day a day, a day. wow a day. Okay. and his strategy was 25 are cold you don't care you don't even look at them mm. it's like mm-hmm. the mcdonalds you know you don't want to work for them but you need a job right so, so you just like it. applying yeah okay easy apply everything don't don't make it that is 25 is minimum time like that mm. he also sort of structured that his goal is prep and this is a annoyance that he has to do to get a job right so 25 cold nothing special about it mm. then 15 he picked 15 jobs tried to find 15 jobs that best fit his resume mm. right and then one job every day he the 15th job or the first job he spent 30 minutes on it mm. and these 30 minutes involved using two email ids i'll tell mm. you why the mm. first thing he did was he if he really likes this job right then it qualifies as this important application mm. he applied with one email id spent all the chunk of his time recru- like getting in touch with recruiters and engineers in that company and if he got a referral response he used his second email id and mm. this is the most important thing he never waited this is the mistake if you remember i did I was like, I'll be prepared. I'll wait. I'll wait. And I even I, when I was doing my strategy, I waited for two days. If I didn't get a response in two days, I applied. Right? Mm. This is better. Wait, wait. So, so this is interesting. So he applied from one email ID, uh, which is just like you saw it, and he made the resume customize it, applied it. Right. Then he reached out to recruiters and engineers, assuming through cold emails and LinkedIn and all of that. Uh, yes. He got. if he got responses and if someone was willing to refer him then use their referral link and use a different email id to apply again yes oh, that is uh, that i've never heard that but uh, that is crazy. interesting it's like it's like a system it's like a system design into <laughs> <us>. <laughs> that, that that is a good loophole because 
I don't think I'm I'm thinking from recruiter perspective. I don't think they really care that hey, this person applied twice. Uh, Can I tell you a secret? I hmm. actually got rejected from Goldman when I applied the first time. <laughs> you applied in the second email ID, in the second email ID. Wait, and wait. So you are telling me you actually used this uh, same same thing like applying once. through different? Okay. But that was because I got rejected already. I botched my online assessment, and I knew that I could have done it better. That was the first online assessment I ever gave hmm. uh, in September ish. So I applied again, and I asked my manager too, and she was like, "I'm glad that you did it because it's a hard thing to recruit." Hmm. And If you if you're persistent and you get in, then good enough, right? Yeah, yeah, no, hundred percent. I think that's a great technique. I'm glad you shared this because yeah. um, this is good. People should start creating second email ID. <laughs> yeah, you already have to, right? You have a personal one and an, uh, the university one. Hmm. So you can just do it around that also. Cool. Let's let's dive into your technical prep uh, part of the interview. <laughs> so you wake up five thirty. The first thirty minutes is my time. Heat a cup of water for one minute thirty seconds. Put coffee in it. Watch it. You know, do that. <laughs> Sit in my sofa, complete darkness, and just drink it. For mm. Mm. Why? Because when I did that, my brain got ready. Mm. And often I realized that five thirty to six, right? I have to start at six. Five forty-five. I was always in my room mm. because I couldn't wait. I wanted to get that fifteen-minute advantage every time. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. what I did was so yeah. my let's say I'm going to pick first problem. Mm. I put my timer on twenty-five minutes. I'm going to try to crack it because that's the goal, right? In an interview, mm. that's what you want to do. I'm going to right. try to crack it, but I don't care about making it in the twenty-five minutes. Yeah, I want to have an idea and start writing code. Yeah. If I'm writing code, I will write code. I will debug. I will try. I will try. But if I cannot write code in those twenty-five minutes, that means I don't have a real idea, right? Yeah. Then what I'm going to do is get up, do five squats. <laughs> that was my like punishment mechanism. <laughs> squats, because you also want to come back at the problem, right? Yeah. Because it's twenty-five. Thinking really hard for twenty-five minutes is super taxing, especially yeah. if you don't have a reward at the end of it. Right. So. I used to like four, three, four minutes just to distract myself. Come back, go to the premium section, and go through the solution like it was a textbook. Right? This is the this is the home page. Mm -hmm. And so what I used to do was spend twenty five minutes on this screen. Okay. Right? This is the screen. And then if you don't get it, you go to solutions. So what it usually used to be was it just solution was just this official solution, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. discussion posts. Were all of these? These are user solutions. Mm. Even I have made these posts, but this is good because what I was saying was the most popular solution, right? Yeah. Sometimes is better than the official solution. Okay, so basically, lead code will also give you solution and yes. explanation, but then there are people who are posting their solution, and sometimes that might be a better solution. Yes, there's a website called Sean Prashad, mm. which has. A list of one seventy one questions. Okay. Mm. So what he comes up with is he comes up with one seventy one questions that have easy is only thirty three, me hard only thirty, and a hundred and eight medium questions mm. because most tech interviews are going to be medium, mm. right? Mm. So the easy questions are sort of for you to build tools like and to get started. Yeah. Yes. Mm. So it's if someone is actually watching from India, they should like get on it today and start yes. working before even they come to United States. They should pause, get up notepad, <laughs> and write this down. <laughs> it's very important. You do the one seventy one. Yeah. You do two questions at at a time mm. each day because that is when you're really learning, not applying. Right, right, right. It's yeah. Time to register and. Think about things. If you do five mm -hmm. questions, you don't remember what trick was where, what was going. All right, let's move on to interview process. Uh, what does it look like when, from the first interview call you get from the recruiter till getting an offer? Okay, so I'm going to use my Goldman Sachs experience as a skeleton, and then I'll tell you where things might differ for companies. So you get an on, you apply with a referral or without a referral, and then usually in your email, you get one of two responses. Mm. one is just a thank you for applying blah 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 or in a in a few hours you'll get an online assessment okay mm. so if you get thank you for applying and then you decide when you're going to do it and i think this is very important you have to decide when you're going to do it the day you get the assessment 
Yeah. yeah, you make it a like an exam. Like we are doing this. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, like you you decide that this is the day uh, I'm gonna do it, whether it be before deadline or on the deadline, but whenever. Yeah. Yes. You make it very intentional. Yeah. So that you sort of build up towards it, right? Now some assessments are proctored, some are not proctored. One of two ways. One is they do a post test analysis, using AI or a person to figure out if you're cheating on it, or they have a shutdown system. Hmm. if you do something that is not allowed it just shuts down and you don't even get to finish it so that's why i'm saying if you're going to give a test which is proctored if you get a oa it go to reddit don't ask the recruiter because they are going to think you're going to cheat on the right and then you give the oa then for me with goldman sachs i had a an online pre recorded behavioral interview mm. online pre recorded that's yeah, interesting higher view F I R E V U E. They'll give you a question like, "What happens if you send an email outside your organization accidentally with mm. critical information?" So you get thirty-five minutes, thirty-five seconds to forty seconds to come up with a response, and then the camera turns on. It records your response. Oh, that is so allow, interesting. Yeah, some wow. companies will allow you to do three. They'll give you three chances. If mm. you don't like your recording, then you can restart. Right. the recording what can else can come in place of this you could get an hr 20 minute call that's a very right. common yeah yeah right yeah. because you have made it to the part of the process where now humans are involved right. the online assessment and if you get this higher view interview these are all sort of tech, automated yeah automated tech or you don't know what's going on right? mm. Mm. now if you get the first round of an interview mm. or an hr 20 minute call that's when you know now this company has registered you as a candidate mm. now they have to reject you right mm. they have given you the benefit of the doubt and they have decided not to employ you but if you just get a random rejection right you apply and then in two days you get a rejection three days you get a rejection seven days you get a rejection that usually means that either they don't sponsor for visas for this specific role or um they have already filled all the positions that they are looking for or stuff like that Mm. I'm just saying this because it's very hard to wake up for months with emails of rejection. <laughs> so yes. Yeah. 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 After this, you get come to what I said, super day. Mm. A super day is usually the technical interview in mm. which you do white you have board. board, white boarding, and the way they do it is sort of like this. You have Zoom or something that has the video be going on, and then you'll have code signal or hacker rank, mm. which. is where you write the code and it is multi access it's like google sheets right multi- right they right. can see what you are writing yeah exactly. they can type everything <laughs> every letter you put on that editor you have to explain it if you say oh so there is like a talking track to while you are coding okay yes you have to because otherwise you risk misunderstanding right mm. because if you explain what you are doing you know that they understand what you've done yeah or like, at uh, least they understand what you are thinking and what's right. your thinking process yeah you could be wrong that's okay if you're wrong it's okay it's even worse if you're right and they don't understand what you're saying mm. right so that's yeah. very keep talking keep talking one of my bloomberg uh, interviews it was a really hard question and it was like a low level design question and, and i did it really quickly because i thought there would be more questions mm. i did that it was like about 10 12 minutes and then he was he didn't want me to write code he was like we're going to discuss this and then if we get to a point where i feel like you want to write code or you need to write code we'll do it so i did it and then he said the one thing that nobody wants to hear you can do better <laughs> and then in that entire interview process that was the one time where i was like holy crap <laughs> i'm done i'm done. so basically he gave he he said you can do better the time complexity was log n he could he said you could do better the only thing better than that is o of 1 like constant time right, right. so i i had exactly this conversation with him right mm-hmm. and he started nodding right he started responding to what i was saying and then i was like all right perfect he's willing to have a conversation then i took the first idea which i knew was absolutely wrong you mm-hmm. cannot use an array right it's going to be o of n not even log n like bad array bad for this question <laughs> yeah i as soon as i said doubly linked list he went 
you get constant feedback if you are on right track or not if you are smart about it you can read body language right mm. Mm. and i will tell you the coolest thing that i heard from that asha asha who was looking for a job who gave us that cool 25 15 linkedin idea he actually makes a seven slide presentation i've heard that too uh, yeah so i i did a podcast that, yeah i did a podcast <laughs> and uh, uh this person he he's a product manager he knows that every time you will be asked tell me something about yourself that's how the yeah. interview starts so he's like hey can i share my screen and then he has this pitch deck for himself and <laughs> then then he will like go through like you know that pitch deck which is amazing and then yeah i mean obviously product manager is like that's what their role is they they have to pitch a lot of their product ideas and things like that so he made it so it not only talks about himself but also shows his product management management skills which was mind blowing so yeah yeah such a cool point because this guy is also a data engineer so mm. he has visualization visualization yeah but i will say this if you are a software engineer and you want to do something like this make a web page yeah make a cool react web page that you can scroll through and, and then show that, that yeah it's like a project also right then, yeah or what does a typical salary range is look like because you are obviously not in like tech i mean your tech role but in a fintech world yeah. a software engineer role i'm trying to think of the lowest number i have heard from my peers and the highest number i've heard the highest number i know the highest number i've heard is 96 dollars an hour Hudson 96 an hour <laughs> what <laughs> that is Hudson river trading yeah hrt <laughs> it's one of those um, high frequency wow. trading firms. that yeah. is i i still can't fathom that. that is there is more than full time roles <laughs> <laughs> <for some negotiations>. <laughs> <laughs> but i will say a bang on average 40 to 44 yeah that's say. what i've heard like 40 to 50 is typical yeah. like 35 to 50 is what i i will say th- if you are allowed to be more i think 35 to 50 is perfect yeah for and and especially for people who don't know internships are usually hourly paid so that's why we are talking about hours uh, so if you yeah. do the math you know usually if it's 40 dollars then it's like roughly 2500 bi weekly so 5000 dollars a month after tax so yeah ish. yeah after tax <laughs> yeah <laughs> that is that is important uh yeah. after tax means you have already paid your taxes and yeah. that is the money you are taking home so you are probably making more like 7000 something because you're paying 20% tax i i actually don't mind sharing my numbers i I think we made seven thousand five hundred dollars a month. After pre- taxes, pre tax, pre taxes. Okay, yeah, yeah. Every month we every so you get paid twice a week, and I think we got just under three thousand dollars. Hmm. Six thousand dollars, and the rest of it went to the government. Right, right. And that we is, have that is we, that is still so good for an internship role. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. And the other thing was there were like there are some other perks like. they gave us $5000 as relocation mm. upfront, and they yeah. gave us $750 as transportation but you mm. had to swipe like you could not do anything with that yeah you have to reimburse it yeah but relocation was money in the bank yeah, yeah. that yeah. is awesome now i'm curious <laughs> you don't have to give me your numbers for bloomberg but what what is the salary range for full time roles then i would say anywhere between $80000 to $200000 and the, are you saying base salary or total comp i'm saying base salary but of course with varying levels of work experience okay okay but i will say let's say 2 years because that's i think the average what people come with with 2 years you're probably going to be, get counted in the no work experience bracket mm. when that's sort of how it works even goldman sachs does that if okay. you have less than 2 years or barely 2 years they're going to negotiate with you and like you know give you the entry, entry level level like level 1 yeah Yeah. As, as, uh, analyst. Yeah. Yeah, And yeah, yeah. If you have if you have anywhere more than four years, more than four years mm. of work experience, you are going to make in higher band thirty thousand dollars more in base salary. They gave him hundred thousand dollars more invested stock. Mm. 
because he has work experience and bonus is also like about five thousand dollars more. And, and so, would that number be more roughly? Would you say three hundred thousand to four hundred thousand? Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's like I. That, that's like over four years because stocks west over four years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. But yeah. his, but I can say that his first year comp is going to be a sweet two hundred and fifty grand. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, what's the one tip would you give to any job seekers or software developers from your experience? Um, my advice is going to be sort of towards hunt, like the preparation, right? The beginning, because a lot of people I've seen have this feeling that oh shit, I'm too late. Right? Mm. Mm. So I will say the best time. It's a quote. The best time to plant a tree was 15 years ago, but the next best time is right now. Mm. And you have to reduce all your wait time. Don't wait. Do 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 do, and something will work out. Nice, love it. Thank you so much. I know it was super long, but I this is so much valuable, and I can't wait to bring you back uh, for not just the master's part uh, where you got the free education and how you did it, but also I think there's gonna be more follow up question from people. So super excited to have you back. But until our next one, keep smiling and keep hustling. <laughs> <laughs>